is now a good time to buy real estate? Should I be waiting for the market to crash? Should I be buying a house in the middle of a, you know, an economic crisis or the middle of a pandemic? In this video, I'm gonna go over all that stuff and kind of give you an insight of my opinion on what's going on in the local real estate market in the United States as well as in Florida which is where I'm located in Tampa Bay and hopefully by the end of this video you can get an idea so you can answer those questions for yourself. So let's get right to the facts of what's going on right now. We know that COVID-19 and evil virus is spreading throughout the world, especially in the United States, and we are literally one step away from turning into a bunch of zombies. Maybe it's not that bad, but it definitely is bad. So let's look at the exact numbers, um, just looking off of a direct Google search online to see what's going on right now. So I'm going to look at my computer right now and we can go over these stats. So just looking at it, and I'll pop it up on the screen, right now in the United States we have 4 million confirmed cases, 1.2 million recovered, and 145,000 deaths, and 15.3 million cases worldwide, and 8.67 million recovered with 624,000 deaths. So that's as of searching up on Google today um, on 07. 23 2020 so july 20 23rd <laughs> july 23rd 2020 that's what comes up on today um is that 100 percent accurate i don't know <laughs> it's what it's what google came up with um with what the stats are today i don't know i'm not giving out tests i have no idea if that's what's going on but so we can see though that this is a you know serious virus that's spreading throughout the world so once this began earlier this year, we saw a large economic shutdown in the United States in which many non-essential businesses were forced to shut down. Um, they are now open back up, but we know that it seemed to really put a big stain on all of these businesses' income, as in decrease their cash flow, you know, it didn't allow them to create any funds. There were government programs that were created to help small businesses, but it seems to me that many small businesses, um, you know, were very well or very much hurt from what was going on uh, during these times when this shutdown was going on. So it looked like we were on an economic brink of collapse um, until we opened back up. But it looks like um, just of recently, California went into a second wave of shutdown. Um, and we could potentially be seeing a full economic shutdown again or maybe just in Florida, which is where I live. I don't know. I'm not a politician. So that's just a quick overall summary of what's going on right now. Uh, just in case you didn't know. Um, so right now, let's get right into the important topic and why you're here watching this video, um, which is real estate. What is going on with the real estate market in the United States? So before I get into the real estate statistics of the United States, let's watch this quick video, which will give you a quick summary of what's going on right now. Pending home sales in May jumped a remarkable 44.3% month to month. That, according to the National Association of Realtors, that is the largest monthly jump on record since they began tracking this in 2001 and blew out all expectations of a jump of about 15%. Sales had fallen about 22% in April. Sales, though, in May still down 5.1% year over year. Now, pending sales represent signed contracts, that is, people out shopping during the month of May and that's when mortgage rates started coming down as well. They started the month around 3.2%. By the start of June, they were down below 3%. Now, the problem here, though, is the supply of homes for sale, still down 19% annually, and new home construction is not ramping enough and up enough, but we did see new home sales jump as well. Not quite the 44%, but this is really a remarkable number. So we can see, just based off that, the pending sales number is up 44% from May to June, in the middle of a pandemic. Doesn't that seem insane? That right there is the largest increase that uh, NAR or the NAR has ever seen. And then the month prior was the largest decrease that we in the United States have ever seen. 
They were only expecting a 15% increase, but ended up getting a 44% increase, which is huge. And then based off that, we can see sales in May are only down 5% year over year. And I would say with currently in this economy, with what's going on, with the shutdowns, with a pandemic, a virus going on, that is amazing, only 5% down. So that's the overall US market, which is huge right now, which honestly, those statistics are great and very positive signs for the future. So now let's get even more in depth and we're gonna talk about the statistics of directly my state, which is Florida. I know other states, other cities, it varies, but this market I'm gonna be talking about is overall Florida and then my specific area in Pinellas, Pasco County. So right now we've actually seen a huge drop in inventory in which we've, we've seen that throughout the United States, but in Pasco, Pinellas County, uh, even Hillsborough County, I am in the Tampa Bay, Florida market. We've seen a huge decrease if, of numbers of listings or active properties on the market online. We're at the lowest we've ever been in the history of you know, our area of Pinellas and Pasco County. And you know what's even crazier is that we've seen this huge decrease of numbers of properties on the market, but we've actually seen a large increase of buyers in the market and we can see that through the absorption rate of what's going on right now. So let's get right into the single family homes of the Florida market. So as we can see here, I won't go over every single detail. You can look at it, take a screenshot of it um, to really see what's going on and then we'll go even more in depth with the counties of uh, Pasco and Pinellas County. Um, but the main things that we're going to look at here is closed sales. We're actually up 1% year over year, as in the number of sales that have closed are up 1% from last year, which is insane because last year we were not in the middle of a pandemic. Next, we're going to look at the median sale price and the average sale price, and you can see those are up 4 and 8%. So what's going on right now is the properties in Florida, um, their values are actually going up even in the middle of a pandemic. And the main reason for that is because we're gonna see that um, the number of buyers are increasing and the number of sellers are decreasing. So that's the basic law of supply and demand. We are very low on supply of houses on the market and there is a very high demand of buyers in our market which is driving prices to actually go up even in the middle of a pandemic. And then another huge stat we're gonna look at is new pending sales is up 23% year over year, um, and as well as new listings are down negative 1.9%. Just the month prior, I believe it was near 20% of new listings were, or negative 20% new listings down um, because a lot of people were fearful, didn't know what was going on, um, but here's the main stat we're going to see is inventory, which is active listings, is down 27.2%. So that right there, um, you know, is a huge indicator that, you know, just our market inventory is going way down and it's the lowest it's ever been. Again, causing prices to go up in our market. So now let's get even more in depth and detail going to my specific county that I work mainly in and looking at the absorption rate to really see what's going on. So looking at this right here, we can see that we are at a 79% absorption rate in June, which is insane. The fact that we're in the, in the middle of a pandemic and we've seen a near 80% absorption rate. And what an absorption rate is, is just the fact that the numbers of listings are going online and then they're being purchased within that time period of, of the one month that we saw in June. So that means 80% of properties on the market are being purchased. So obviously it shows that there's a there's very few people actually selling their homes right now, even though that they can get top dollar, but there's a lot of people, a lot of demand still interested in buying. And that might be due to um, just the low supply and lack of housing, as well as just recently, we are seeing near 3% interest rates on 30 year mortgages, which is the lowest historically it has ever been. So the question is with all this going on right now, is it a good time to buy real estate? So let's dive deep into the actual numbers of how much the interest rate actually affects 
what's going on right now, um, especially when you're buying a home on a 30 year mortgage and compare. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through it. I'll be right in here with you looking at it. We're gonna be looking at a $200,000 house. We're gonna be purchasing it with a 5% down payment. All right, so that's gonna bring our loan amount to $190,000. Um, and we're going to put our rates at 3%, right? So we're going to put $10,000 down, 3% interest rate on a basic 30-year mortgage. Property tax is $2,400. PMI is going to be 0.8%, which is private mortgage insurance, something that will need to be paid to the mortgage company um, if you do not have usually over 20% of equity within the property. Home insurance, $1,200. These numbers are, you know, very good for my local market. They're very accurate, I would say, for that's why I type them in that way. Um, I know it might be different. Your taxes might be $30,000 versus $3,000 if you're in New York versus Florida, um, which is another reason you know you should definitely retire in Florida. Give me a call. My information will be linked down below. Um, but right here, we're going to focus on the payment. That's going to be $1,227 per month, including your PMI, of course. So overall, your mortgage is going to be $1,227 per month um, with all that info at a 3% rate. And look again, look at the bottom right corner. We're going to look at the total interest paid. It's going to be $98,000. $377. So keep those two numbers in mind and we're going to go over the same variables and then we're going to look at um, a 4% rate and a 5% rate and we're going to compare and then we'll talk about it from there. So now we're looking at a 4% rate. All the variables are the same as they were before except now we're at a 4% rate. So let's look at the numbers Right now, our payment with a PMI is at $1,333.76, um, which wasn't a large increase from the last mortgage payment. But look at the total interest paid now. So that's going to increase just by that 1%. It's going to increase from, um, which was near, I think it was $98,000, to $136,000. 552 So an increase of roughly, you know, $37,000 just from that 1% increase. So, all right, so let's get into even more. So now we're going to look at a 5% interest rate and see what the large effects are and compare them. So boom, with all the same variables, we're going to be looking at a $1,446 monthly payment and then a total of a $177,000 and yeah, $177,185.99. So an increase of $80,000 of interest paid over the lifespan of 30 years. So $80,000 increase um, based off just that 2% increase in rates. So right now, you know, that's kind of a huge reason that, you know, we've seen the, the buyers on market, you know, buying like crazy because they're taking advantage of what's going on. Um, if you can qualify for something at 3%, um, you know, the lenders, the banks, they're practically giving away free money. And it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily a huge jump in your mortgage payment. You went from like 1400 something to 1200 something. It was an increase of like 200 to $250. Nothing crazy overall um, payment wise. So it wasn't that big of a deal in that sense. But the idea that you might be saving money potentially by you know waiting for the market to go down versus taking advantage of the rates right now, you know, of course, you know, we, we can get a little bit more technical and talk about how you know just buying a home in general um, is a great idea. And I know it's going to be a, buying a home is necessarily a liability and not an asset until you turn it into a rental property. And instead of you paying for it, it's paying you. Um, but in that case, you know, I would say all those rates are amazing, especially when we're going to compare it to what, you know, five, 10 years ago, whatever that may be, when rates were 10%, 20%, 30%. Your parents are so jealous of the mortgage rates right now. I'm going to say that. So, and if they haven't refinanced already, now is a great time. So we've seen appraisers off the hook. 
um, just because you know the low rates that people can get. So we've seen a huge increase of people looking to either pull the equity out of their home right now or just generally refinance for a lower rate. So now let's let's look at another example of um, you know and compare the rates if the property values were to go down versus an interest rate. So looking at this statistic right now, you know I'm not sure exactly what all their numbers were like their PMI rate or you know their taxes insurance I would assume the variables are all all the same for this example but we can see if you bought now for 200,000 at a 6% rate your payment would be $1200 per month right so now we're going to compare a home to going down negative 5% down 5% and our in interest rate will increase 0.5% our payment will roughly be the same and then the next scenario our home price will go down 10% our interest rate will be up 1% and our payment again will be the same so based off this example or this scenario we can see that 1% increase in interest rate is about the same as your home value going down 10% so and another thing that buyers will see as well as I believe is that I would not be very surprised if your rate went from 3% to 5% very shortly. So that's 2%. That's 20% decrease in value. That's worth the same amount to get the same payment. So something I tell my buyers now is that I know we're at a 3% rate today, right? If you can lock that in. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, later this year, even within the next six months, that the rates are from 3% to 5%, because we've seen a huge fluctuation of rates. You know, I know uh, one of my recent clients of mine locked in at near a 5% rate, didn't have the best credit necessarily, but they locked in at a 5% not too long ago. So these things fluctuate. So if you can lock it in now for 3% versus 5%, that right there shows you that's near 20% value of your house, just getting that 2% difference. So it is much better now to lock it in at 3% versus trying to wait and hoping that the home prices will go down 20%. So many people are fearful of what's going on right now. We don't know. Nobody can say that they can predict the future of what the overall economy, what the real estate market is gonna do. Um, because just no one can predict the future and as well this has never happened before there's never been such a huge pandemic that has caused such an economic shutdown before like we see today and technically i'm in the same boat as you guys i bought my first home at 20 years old just a year ago so you know i'm in the same boat and you know i i think i made a great decision and you know we'll see how it plays out near the end but honestly if you if you plan on uh, you know, either staying in your home or keeping it for more than five to seven years, uh, I guarantee it's gonna be a great idea and you will come out green on the top. So anybody that is necessarily fearful of the market and what's going on and the uncertainty, there's just one thing I wanna say to you is that you should not let fear stand in the way of a great opportunity. And honestly, we are in a secular market in which that means, you know, we see ups and downs, we see corrections, you know, every 10 to 15 years. It's just normal. We are due for one. It's just a matter of how long will it last? How low will home prices go? But honestly, if you are very worried about that, then there's a simple answer, which is make sure that you find a great property that fits your criteria and try to get instant equity within it. You know, whether that be just finding a good deal under market value um, or just putting a lot of sweat equity into the home whatever that is just make sure the home you get has equity within it you know hopefully at least 20 percent and then from there you know you know you will have that great deep cushion in your home if prices ever were to fall that deep just overall don't don't be that person that's waiting on the sideline forever uh, waiting for the next big market to crash you know, to find that great deal at that great price because there's deals out there every day. Just make sure you find either a great realtor or a great mentor to work with to, you know, and also educate yourself, read books, you know, watch YouTube, you know, watch videos like either like I make or people, you know, shout out uh, Graham Stephan, meet Kevin, you know, people like that, just, you know, um, Max Maxwell you know, great educators online on YouTube. We're getting away from the book reading platform and more so, you know, 
audio books, uh, podcasts, YouTube channels that are you know educational in today's world. Just invest in yourself and just start learning, honestly. So overall, I hope you liked that video. Um, I hoped it was educational. If you found value in it, do me a huge favor and uh, hit that like button. Comment down below um, what you think is gonna happen in the near future, whether the market's gonna crash, how deep it's gonna go. Let me know what you think and make sure you subscribe for uh, you know more weekly content like this and I'll see you in the next video.